Let us pray. Gracious God, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the source of life, of health and healing. Today, as we come to this high moment in the lives of these students, as they assume new responsibilities, taking the next step in their academic and professional journeys, we pray for them, that they may dedicate their lives to those in need who come their way, to be instruments of your compassion and healing, that they may use every piece of knowledge you gave them, including their unique understanding of the body, mind, and spirit, to ease pain, to strengthen the body, and to care for your people. O oh Lord, make their lives an extension of your own, that all will be made well. May their lives and profession bring glory to you. Amen. Hello, I'm Stan Worden, the fifth president of Methodist University. It is my privilege to welcome you to the first ever occupational therapy pinning ceremony at the first entry level occupational therapy doctoral program in the state of North Carolina. Today, we will honor the students in the classes of 2021 and 2022. Because of the fast escalating COVID pandemic last spring, we were unable to hold the scheduled OTD pinning ceremony. So the class of 2021 is rejoining us for this ceremony after successfully completing their level two field work requirements. These students are already change makers by virtue of being our very first OTD students, and they will continue on that change trajectory as they serve in their careers as occupational therapists. They will bring function and meaningful daily life participation to clients in traditional hospitals and clinics, in preschools and high schools, in community organizations, and in many other settings. They will provide support ranging from facilitating the development of the youngest, most vulnerable premature infants, to helping aging parents in hospice care to have a fulfilling end of life and a dignified death. Spouses, parents, teachers, and siblings will look to them for knowledge and creative strategies. By training at Methodist University at the highest degree level in the profession, these students will be prepared to use an occupational lens to solve problems that others overlook and to launch their profession into innovative practice domains. It is fitting that these students are learning occupational therapy at an institution with a missional commitment to truth, justice, virtue, and love. These values will infuse their professional practice as they assist their clients in finding new ways to participate in the activities of daily life and in developing the skills needed for meaningful occupations in which they are able to function independently, to have a satisfying quality of life, and to holistically integrate mind and body as they carry out their daily routines. In keeping with their association motto, living life to the fullest, they will help their clients find dignity, pride, and satisfaction in their lives. There is no finer way than that to live into the Methodist University mission. I want to conclude with a special welcome and thank you to the family and friends of these students who have helped to make this moment possible for you. I will paraphrase the poet John Donne to remind you that no person is an island entire of itself. Every person is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. None of us achieves anything alone. So please remember to regularly thank those who walk beside you and at times hold you upright as you move toward completion of your occupational therapy doctorate. Again, welcome to the pinning ceremony. Hello, my name is Meredith Gronsky and I serve as the director of the Doctor of Occupational Therapy program. Welcome to Methodist University's first ever occupational therapy pinning ceremony. Today we will honor the students of the class of 2021 and the class of 2022. As we come together today virtually, we know that this is a proud moment for each of the students and we wish that we could share it with all of you and your family and friends in person. We hope that the significance and celebratory spirit of this ceremony continues even though we are physically apart. Each of the students and faculty selected the occupational therapy profession for varied reasons and from diverse paths. 
Some have had a family member who has experienced a chronic condition or injury that initiated their exposure to occupational therapy. Others were exploring a different healthcare profession and caught a glimpse of an occupational therapist in action, which ignited an intense interest and passion for the profession. No matter when or how we reached this point, there is no doubt that this is an exciting time to be a part of the profession. These students will propel the lives of those they serve and the profession forward. Occupational therapy is claiming a foothold in emerging practice areas, working effectively and efficiently with new technologies, and building a strong body of knowledge to support the science of our work. Our students will graduate with a diverse and targeted skill set that will prepare them to be leaders in the profession. To the class of 2021, as our inaugural cohort, you have blazed the trails of this program for new courses, policies, and traditions. You have always been our first guinea pigs, but this past year, you have dealt with delays, uncertainties, and changes that you could not have imagined would be a part of your OT journey. When graduate students are under stress, their true colors and unique qualities tend to show. You all have shown grace, flexibility, commitment, and kindness during the past several months. In the midst of a pandemic across a variety of healthcare and community settings, you all completed and fulfilled your fieldwork training requirements, earning the highest praises from your fieldwork educators. The faculty and I are extremely proud of the high bar that you have set. Now you are just beginning a new form of doctoral work. You will be applying all of the knowledge and skills that you have learned in the first two years of the foundational cor coursework and in the past six months of fieldwork. You will take your clinical reasoning and critical thinking skills to the next level to develop new programs and models of practice, develop your leadership and education skills, and disseminate your capstone research. I know that you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and we are so thrilled to see you finish the last two semesters as strong and confident practitioners. To the class of 2022, over the past year, you have navigated changes, uncertainties, and new ways of conducting yourself as a graduate student. We abruptly transitioned into the world of virtual learning together adapted our routines and habits for a fully online summer term, and have made the transition back to in-person learning while caring for and supporting each other in safe and healthy learning spaces. As you prepare to transition to full-time fieldwork rotations next month, I know that you will demonstrate the values of our profession in your humility for the learning process. You will be more open to feedback, and more prepared than others. You will be curious. You will seek out learning opportunities beyond the standard experiences. And most importantly, you will place the quality of life and participation of your future clients central to your understanding and performance. We have watched your clinical reasoning skills develop exponentially over the past year. And I know you will each excel as you progress through your placements. Congratulations to the class of 2021 and class of 2022 students as they take these next steps on the path to becoming caring, innovative occupational therapists who demonstrate the distinct value of authentic occupational therapy practices through their body of knowledge, specialized skills, and client-centered care. Congratulations. Hello everyone, my name is Lauren Thomas and I have had the honor of serving as the SOTA president for my class over the past two years. This afternoon, I want to take a few minutes to acknowledge my fellow classmates and the many accomplishments that we have achieved thus far on our journeys to becoming occupational therapists in the inaugural class at Methodist University. In searching for the right words to say, the two words that came to my mind to describe our class were unbreakable and perseverance. As the inaugural class of Methodist University's Doctor of Occupational Therapy program, we have been through a unique 
and challenging experience together. We have had the opportunity to help be the foundation of this program and shape it into what it will be for years to come. Now, this has not always proven to be an easy task, but it is a task that I am truly grateful to have been a part of. Our first challenge came during year one, learning to navigate school amongst a hurricane. But little did we know that this was all in preparation to help us navigate doctorate level classes and clinicals in the middle of a global health pandemic. In between these challenges, we have had countless late nights studying for exams together. We shared many tears, we pushed each other to be and do our best, and we've had so many good times and laughs through all of it. So to say our journey has been unique would be an understatement, but regardless of any roadblock, I continually find myself amazed at the determination and perseverance that the class of 2021 has demonstrated along the way. We have made it through these past two years as a family, and personally, that is something that I am truly, truly grateful for. I know that this is only the start of our journey as occupational therapists, but I have no doubt that each of you will leave your mark on each patient that you are yet to meet. I am so thankful that Methodist gave me a family, and I am honored to take this next step with each of you as we soon become doctors of occupational therapy. And now there's only one thing left to say, 30 in and 30 out. Thank you. Hello, I'm Caroline Cheeseboro, a second year student in the OTD program. This year, I serve as the president of the MU Student Occupational Therapy Association. It is hard to believe almost two years have passed since we entered OT school. The countless hours of studying and preparing for skills tests, projects, and presentations will all be worth it very soon. Class of 2022, we are so close to becoming occupational therapists. We all found a passion for this field and now have the opportunity to enrich the community with the same passion while using the skills and knowledge we have learned over the past two years. This ceremony is a representation of our transition from the classroom to fieldwork. As each of us begins our fieldwork, keep in mind that we represent not only MUOGD, but the future of occupational therapy practice. Congratulations. Hello, my name is Matthew Foreman. I'm an assistant professor here in the Occupational Therapy Program at Methodist University. And it's my distinct pleasure today to introduce our guest speaker, Ms. Rhonda Schweitzer. Rhonda received her OT degree from East Carolina University. She also worked at Cape Fear Valley Hospital for 31 years, providing OT services for people with neurological impairments, driving and vestibular evaluation services, uh, wheelchair clinics, and she served 20 years as a fieldwork coordinator for students across the nation. She's also part of a centrosite team working with ophthalmologists for vision therapy uh, for people with macular degeneration. She presently works as an OT in a skilled nursing facility, providing services for the geriatric population. And the students will recognize her because she's currently working as an adjunct instructor here uh, at Methodist University OT in the clinic-based learning class. She's also been a board member of our MU OTD Community Advisory Board since the inception of the program. So again, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce you as our guest speaker. Rhonda, thank you for being with us here today and sharing your experience with the students. Hello, I'm Rhonda Schweitzer, adjunct instructor and community advisory board member for the occupational therapy program here at Methodist. To the future occupational therapist, their family, friends, and guests, I extend a warm welcome to the first annual pinning ceremony. When I was asked to give the keynote address, I thought to myself, what an honor to provide words of advice and encouragement to such a wonderful group of individuals. Individuals who will be making a difference in so many lives. I am truly honored. As I gathered my thoughts in preparation for this speech, I stopped and reflected on this year. It truly was a year of challenges and change as we faced the pandemic and virtual learning. But each of you rose above and accepted these challenges. And yes, that's what I expected from you, the first classes from the first doctoral occupational therapy program in North Carolina. Nelson Mandela said, everyone can rise above their circumstances and achieve success if they are dedicated to and passionate about what they do. I have seen this dedication and passion in you, the future of occupational therapy. 
So what is occupational therapy? It's the use of assessment and intervention to develop, recover, or maintain meaningful activities or occupations. The American Occupational Therapy Association takes it a step further and states that occupational therapy addresses performance that support engagement in occupations that affect physical and mental health, well-being, and quality of life. The words that have always stood out to me are meaningful activities, well-being, and quality of life. Occupation in our job title means helping our patients to restore and recover what is meaningful and purposeful to them. What does that look like? It's teaching someone to dress themselves again after a stroke, learning to drive again after a spinal cord injury, facilitating fine motor control so that a child can hold and play with their toy, and assisting the aging patient with self-feeding, and the list goes on and on. So whatever is purposeful and meaningful to them, that is our goal. So as you go out to begin your field works and careers, remember you will make a difference to so many. Always strive to be a positive influence in our profession and never stop learning and searching for the answers. At times you may feel unsure and that's okay. We all go through that. It's part of learning and growing. You will now be part of a medical team and it's okay to ask questions. Let integrity be your guide and develop resilience and understanding. Be hopeful and joyful in your patient's success. They will need that support from you. You've worked hard to learn how to help patients live their best lives. And as you progress through your career, you're going to do so much good for so many. Never forget how priceless you are. Learn to listen, really listen, and always look in your patient's eyes and see them, really see them. Compassion and empathy are great gifts, and I pray this over each of you as you begin this awesome journey. I can truly speak from 35 plus years of experience that this is the most rewarding and exciting career that, you, that will give back to you every day. You've chosen well. So as I conclude, let me leave you with these words from Maya Angelou. I have learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Now you go be awesome. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sherry Michelle, and I'm an assistant professor in the Doctor of Occupational Therapy program. The annual Occupational Therapy Pinning Ceremony signifies the transition from the first two years of foundational didactic learning to fieldwork-based experiential learning in hospitals, clinics, schools, productive aging facilities, and other practice settings. The pinning ceremony is an important step in professional development that signifies joining the communities of practice and commitment to the best qualities and values of an occupational therapist. The pinning ceremony typically occurs in the spring of the student's second year, just prior to their first level two fieldwork placement. Our inaugural class of 2021 was not able to participate in the scheduled pinning ceremony due to the COVID-19 pandemic. They returned from successful completion of their level two fieldwork requirements and joined the class of 2022 for our delayed inaugural pinning ceremony in April, 2021. The pin that the students receive bears the symbol of the Yarborough Bell Tower constructed on campus in 1964. The bell tower stands tall enough to be seen from almost every corner of campus. It is the symbol of strength and heritage in higher education, and it further demonstrates the connection of the Doctor of Occupational Therapy program to the university's mission and values. During the ceremony, the students hear a keynote message by an invited adjunct instructor, a fieldwork educator, or community partner. The occupational therapy community joins with the students to recite the creed of occupational therapists, a recommitment to the value of the profession from their initial convocation ceremony at the start of the program. All students receive a blessing of the hands to represent the importance of human touch in healthcare and to empower our students to reflect on the power of their hands to heal, 
comfort, and support. Congratulations to the class of 2021 for successfully completing your level two fieldworks and continuing on with the rest of your education and onto your deck projects. And congratulations to the class of 2022 for completing your didactic learning and heading off to your level two fieldwork experiences. Hi, I'm Dr. Dana Colflesh, Assistant Professor with the Doctor of Occupational Therapy Program at Methodist University. Now, we will be moving on to the presentation of the pins. Ashley Marie Amon. Kylie Medlin Arp. Hannah Lee Henningsen Barham. Shelby Gray Benicky. Haley Nicole Bennett. Margaret Julia Berger. Haley Anna Scarlett Dale. Hannah West Diffenbaugh. Leali Ruth Edwards. Yenebi Fernandez. Lauren Alyssa Fry. Caitlin Bennett Futrell. Lillian Kathleen John. David Tyler Jones. Sarah Siemens Kukin. Carly Elizabeth Curie. Shantavia Taporsha Morgan. Maria Elizabeth Petrella. Anastasia Marie Pona. Caitlin Elizabeth Ponco. Tashara Tiffany Reed. Michaeli Amber Roney. Samantha Ashley Rodriguez. Stephanie Victoria Rodriguez. Kelsey Elizabeth Rublinger.
Lauren Ann Thomas. Alexis Freeman Walters. Jasmine Louise Whitby. Elizabeth Catherine White. Carson Rose Williams. Carly Catherine Carver. Caroline Maria Cheeseborough. Summer Nicole Crowell. Kensley Grant Davis. Caitlin Melissa Del Angel. Mary Ida Dunn. Julia Nicole Dunshi. Hannah Pauline Foster. Lena Alexandria Gibson Showalter. Abigail Jane Green. Cameron Miles Harris. Haley Lynn Harris. Taylor Malpass Hawkins. Sydney Ray Hen. Kelsey Blake Hunter. Christina Bethann Jackman. Aaliyah Marie James. Katherine Hunter Jones. Natalie Marie Kerr. Keely Losing Cubic. Tyler James Marinelli. Alexandra Hope Martinez. Samuel John Maycock. Michaela 
Gray McLamb. Victoria Elizabeth Morgan. Leanne Marie Pollard. Erica Marie Santos. Justin Senkapong. Keenan Elizabeth Steele. Abby James Tucker. Margaret Sadie Ruth Warren. Dana Catherine Weber. Congratulations to both the class of 2021 and the class of 2022 on this milestone in your education. We wish you all the best in the future. Hello, my name is Cindy Erb and I am an assistant professor in the Doctor of Occupational Therapy program. This creed is adapted from the original 1924 Occupational Therapy Professional Pledge and Creed. Students, you first recited this pledge during your convocation on the first day of orientation. Please recite it with us as you recommit yourselves to the values and responsibilities of the profession. Reverently and earnestly, I pledge my wholehearted service in aiding those struggling in mind and body to regain health through daily occupation. To this end, that my work for those with disabilities may be successful. I will ever strive for greater knowledge, skill, and understanding in the discharge of my duties in whatever position I may find myself. I solemnly declare that I will hold and keep unbroken whatever I may learn of the lives of my clients and endeavor to keep their occupational needs principal in my thoughts and actions. I acknowledge the dignity of the cure for disease and disability and the safeguarding of health, wellness, and quality of life, which no act is menial or inglorious. I will walk in upright faithfulness and respect for those I work with and to those under whose guidance I am to work. I will seek patience, kindness, and humility in all of my professional occupational therapy endeavors. Thank you, 
and my sincere congratulations to each one of you. This is a high moment in your calling as a healthcare professional. It is my honor to help you mark this moment with a blessing of your hands for the work of a doctor of occupational therapy. I invite you to pause, to open your hands as if you are receiving a gift, to look at all of the creases that are in your palms. Your hands are unique, a gift from God. Consider all of the work that your hands are doing. Your hands and the work they do are sacred as you bring healing, restoration, and wholeness. We often pray for those who are injured or ill, who are receiving care. But today we pause to pray for the clinicians who render that care. It is likely that the blessing has its roots in the history of healthcare facilities that were founded by faith groups. It's not uncommon to hear healthcare professionals speak of their career choice as a calling, similar language that is used by religious leaders. May this time of blessing be an opportunity for you to ponder the importance and the sacredness of your work. The oil we will use is hyssop oil, used since biblical days for cleansing to treat minor cuts and aid in physical healing. At the crucifixion, hyssop was dipped into vinegar and wiped across the lips of Jesus to ease suffering. I invite you or your family member or friend to place a drop of oil in your palm in preparation to receive this blessing. Let us pray. In the name of God, compassionate and merciful, almighty and righteous, I bless you. I anoint your hands that you may have subtle strength and sure skill to hear the stories that assessments can't explain. Let your hands be tender and healing, making God's grace tangible, capable and skilled, promoting health and independence in daily life for the persons you will serve to the end that all persons achieve participation in everyday life activities. Drawing on God's patient love for you, may you embody a patience born of love for all those who will need your skill and care. In return, even as you give thanks to God for this high calling in your life, may you know the gratitude of those whom you serve and be strengthened in the knowledge that your work is in the name of God. As Jesus taught the disciples by word and example, may you continue to be inspired by and committed to learning that you may teach others new strategies. May your teachings support safe habits and smooth routines that safeguard and support wellness of body and mind. May God bless and keep you always. And may God bless the work of your hands to be not only a source of healing for others, but also for your own soul. Amen. I want to thank all of you for being a part of our special ceremony today. I know that your support and encouragement was felt by each of the students, whether you were watching from on campus, at home, or in a different state. Students, we have learned that during a global public health crisis, People turn to healthcare pr practitioners for steadiness and hope. With that great responsibility comes great burdens, and burnout is common. Regardless of what setting you serve, you will be in a position where you see the extremes of human emotion and suffering. You will support your clients and their families through the best and worst times of their lives. I know that you will continue to work hard to remain client-centered evidence-based, and occupation-focused in these next phases of your journey. In order to be empathetic and support those who receive your services, you must first care for yourselves and care for each other. Continue to hold each other up. Find your own occupational balance so that you can be everything that your clients need you to be as you help them live their lives to the fullest. Wear your OTD pin as a symbol of your commitment to the values of our profession and the mission of our OTD program. I am incredibly proud of what you have done so far, 
and I am eager to watch you grow even more in the next year. Congratulations.